Today's military utilizes precision equipment to carry out missions in a war zone. Things like radar were new to the men who flew planes in World War II. Don Shutters went from being an Iowa Hawkeye to a pilot. He led missions on a B-34 bomber. Gary Mativier gets to the heart of his story. What were you doing prior to the war? I was going to school, going to the University of Iowa. and. Uh, Intended to go back, but uh, never got there. What were you hoping to be? What was your dream? Uh, I was going to be a, an accountant or a bean counter or whatever you want to call them. <laughs> were you drafted or did you enlist? No, I enlisted in the Air, well, at that time it was the Army Air Corps, uh, in October of 42. But Don's life was about to veer off course, big time. It would take him on adventures he never imagined and would never forget. He was off to boot camp, pilot school, then into the Pacific on a B-24 bomber. Went from San Francisco to Hawaii to some little, little island jumping to, to New Guinea. and From there on, it was all business. <laughs> Most of his missions would be above the dangerous waters south of Japan, where so many American bombers crashed after miscalculating just how much fuel it would take to get back after their bombing runs. I'm gonna take you back to that first bombing run again. Do you remember the uh, the feeling that you had? Did you have mixed emotions dropping the first bomb load? Well, the dropping it didn't bother me. It was the fact that I wanted to make darn sure that uh, we could turn around and go home. <laughs> but uh, somebody said, well, did you ever have, a, like you say, a guilty conscience for that? No, no. I figure they're shooting at me and I'm shooting at them, so. Fair is fair. <laughs> and you had a mission to accomplish, so did you, could you tell if you hit your target or not? And how did you feel when you uh, realized you, you did? You really couldn't tell. Uh, we could tell a lot of times when we were out alone, because we lit a lot at night. And we would usually uh, attack the uh, fuel storage area. And if you see saw flames, you thought, well, I, we did okay. <laughs> Which, some, at first, the first time bombing with that radar, I thought, you gotta be kidding, you know, you see that little sc screen going around, and, and that's, what, 75 years ago for crying out loud. And you, it's not as refined as it is today. Case, oh, there it is right there. I said, oh yeah, oh, well, if you say so. So anyway, it, they tell you, you know, drive, fly it, 350 degrees or something, and uh, turn a little right, turn a little left, hold it steady, bombs away. And it, of course, you don't see that because you're up flying. But uh, when you turn away and you see see the flames, why well, you know you got a hit. But uh, and not always. <laughs> when you did get a hit, was there a roar? And that did you guys celebrate or what? Give us an example of one of the. Uh, In a way, it was just you know. Nice going. That's our job. Let's get to heck. Go home. And, uh, because sometimes you were uh, the biggest thing, and, and our big, our biggest losses were some people that just could not adjust their fuel properly. Uh, what you did is you you had a what they call a no, that I can't think of any of it, but it's a combination of air and gas and you would narrow that thing down until it just got almost to the red point and then back off a little so you know you were, you were using your fuel at the most advantageous uh, part. And uh, a lot of people just didn't do that right and they ran out of gas before they got home. So, and there was no place to land but the water. You can see the full story on the heart of the story with Gary Mativier on YouTube.